So when you have downloaded Anaconda, you might be able to fetch Jupyter Notebook by typing Jupyter Notebook on a search. Once you type Jupyter Notebook on a search here, the Jupyter Notebook is an open source web application that you can use to create and share documents, not only uh, Python documents, but also the other text documents like text, live codes, equations, visualizations, etc. Okay. So Jupyter Notebooks, uh, once you click on this Jupyter Notebook, you will be able to find a local host window like this. Okay. And the Jupyter Notebook has evolved from the word, which is a combination of three words, Julia, Python, and R. Since it supports all these three programs, so it can be called as Jupyter Notebook. So there are also many distributions of the Python language. Apart from Jupyter Notebook, you can also use CPython and uh, IDE, Spider, and etc. Okay. So once uh, you click on the Jupyter Notebook, this will start up with the Jupyter and your default browser should start with the following contents. So this is the desktop, what you can see. And you could create a folder. You could create a new folder. Okay, here on your right screen, you could create a new folder. And you could name that folder here. You can rename the folder or else you can try early, you can create the folder and you can just uh, try to identify the folder on this desktop. One second, it is taking some time. Okay, so this is taking some time. So let me just assume that I have created a folder by the name 18 ece 646 underscore Python 2021. So I will just uh, click on it. And so now that you know how to start a notebook server, you should probably learn how to create an actual notebook document. So here, all you need to do is click on the new button. So here you could see upload and new in the right um, corner of the screen. Click on the new button and it will open up a list of choices like Python 3, text file, folder, and so on. You click on Python 3. So once you click on Python 3, you could see the notebook. So this is an untitled notebook. You can just try to um, name your notebook of your choice. So this is the title of the page and the name of your notebook. Say if I try to rename the title as say sample program or an example so i've renamed it successfully now just uh, scroll down or up your title so now you could see this is a cell structure program so this is one cell so a notebook cell defaults to use code using code whenever you first create one and the cell uses the kernel so this is one cell, you call it as one kernel. You can also uh, select the different aspects like markdown, raw, NB, convert, or in heading. So, but now I, since I'm typing a code here, a Python code on this cell, I could be using the code version to type the programs on the cell. So one, whenever you type any program, so this would be the console here, this is the cell where you're going to type the program. Suppose I am going to type a, a line called print inside a single code, hello world. Okay, so now this is a statement. Here, this is a statement with a print statement. Print is a keyword here. We'll come across a different set of keywords and inbuilt keywords or a reserve words. And this is a syntax to print a statement and I want to print a string. So that is why it is encoded in a single code. 
that is hello world so i want to print a string here so i'll be using the print keyword inside a common braces and a string called hello world now how to run this program i could use the run button here the run option you can see here in the toolbox so run selected cell okay i will select this cell since i have only one cell here i would select this cell and i would run this so whatever comes below the cell so this is a result window you could see the result window is here below exactly below the cell so you can write you can write multiple commands or statements okay. uh, like this and you can also use another cell so this is hello world in second cell say for example so the codes are organized in such a way that organized in a cell structure so you can choose randomly you can randomly pick any cell and you can try to run your program so jupyter notebook may um, anybody who was writing the program for the first time they can easily organize the codes in a cell structure and they can run individual cells okay it depends upon the situation you can use these cells and you can try to run using the run button and uh, cell structures are organized in uh, row formats if you have a multiple cells in your notebook you can run the cells in order and also very importantly you can share your variables and imports across the cell say for example i have declared a variable with a value a variable called a with a value equals to 2 okay now i could use this variable and another cell also here i could you could see i can have declared a variable in the cell 4 here and i can use it in another cell so the variable across the cells can be organized very importantly you cannot print a here right because the cells are an the cells are organized okay since uh, it has already been executed here this entire program will understand what is my variable a but if you are using this variable without actually assigning or the value being assigned to variable or without actually being used anywhere across the cells the cell will not identify that variable once you have used this variable across any cells it can be used anywhere so cells shares the information of the variable across the cells if it is priorly identified by any of the cells so apart from this you have the different menus like uh, the different menus that you can use to interact with your notebook the menu runs along the top of the notebook here you could see you have file edit view insert cell kernel widget and help menu okay so the first menu is the file menu where you can create a notebook correct and uh, or else you can also uh, open a pre-existing one if you have created already so the next is the edit menu where you can edit like uh, you can cut copy paste cells and so on and you have the view menu which is useful for toggling the visibility of uh, the header or the toolbar which will be using it in future you can see the insert menu just inserts the cell above or below the current cell and uh, already we have come across the cell what are cells that like you can perform different operations on the cell you can run the cells you can select the cell above run all the cells at a time run all the cells above the current cell or below and so on okay and kernel this is a very interesting uh, the word a keyword kernel cell is for working with the kernel that is running in the background here you can restart the kernel reconnect and uh, restart all the kernels so uh, i would say a kernel is nothing but a group of statements or a group of codes which are used to exhibit or which are used to uh, run or compile towards an objective or a particular function the widget menu to save uh, or clear the widget states this we will not be using for uh, for a moment of a couple of classes 
otherwise we are using the entire Jupyter notebook with uh, the file menu uh, we will operate uh, many different types of menus for performing the operations in the cells okay so i hope uh, now you are little familiar with the uh, Jupyter notebook how to use this so i'll repeat it i just need to go back to this desktop just need to create a new folder and then create a new python file and this will give you the Jupyter notebook file which has got the different entities like cell file edit view insert cell kernel widgets so we'll be having one cell at the initial stage and you can start typing your commands writing programming in each cell you can also try to write programs in different cells organize your codes at different levels and uh, you can run all the cells at a time or you can run perform the operations on a single cell and this hub you got the flexibility of using and finally you can share these codes to any user if anybody wants to um, moderate or if anybody wants to like you say uh, uh, reuse the codes or just try to give some uh, what is it like insights or do some corrections on the codes and uh, always it's possible to use it online just share this link so the codes will be visible to the other end okay so let us just go back to our uh, syllabus so do you have any questions just let me know in the Jupyter notebook like uh, still if you have any questions related to how to perform the basic operations on the Jupyter notebook I, I just some comments on the comment section if you have any doubts or we should go to continue the syllabus Are the slides visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Yes, sir. So in a yeah, uh, in our previous class we have introduced uh, Python and a uh, couple of frameworks and uh, the different types of processors which will be used for higher dimensional data processing and uh, how to install with Jupyter notebook and uh, some uh, part of your syllabus. Uh, why should you learn to write programs and uh, uh, creativity and motivation behind the program. If you take up the current situation or the issue related to uh, the COVID, uh, the scarcity of uh, oxygen cylinders, as well as uh, what you say, the remdesivir uh, uh, medicine. So uh, probably uh, during 2020, uh, we could have predicted what would be the impact of second wave and what would be the supply and demand chain with respect to the current situation. But many of us have failed in order to do what? Forecasting or predicting based upon our previous data. What will happen if thousands are infected? What will happen to the supply chain of oxygen and other medicines if 10,000 are infected or 20,000 are infected? And are we uh, really prepared? So uh, this leads to creativity and motivation of any programmer. Or uh, Programming can be a very rewarding job, both financially as well as personally. And here I could uh, like to add one more a keyword called uh, societal benefit or medical sciences also uh, looking into the current situation and as i said uh, building uh, useful elegant and clever programs which uh, you could uh, really definitely look into uh, the future or predict or uh, forecast the things so that definitely would lead to creativity and i would like to take one more example here in this situation probably you might have heard about uh, the natural calamities like uh, uh, the floods or um, the tornadoes or uh, most of the like south part of uh, the Americas like uh, most of the time said has uh, 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 been uh, or, or tremendously been affected by the nature in terms of uh, tornadoes and other part of the cities too. So uh, there is a university called uh, 
uh, Orlando, I guess, I forgot. So there, uh, the research is happening, how to detect the, the impact of the floods or the impact of the tornadoes or the heavy winds just by understanding the patterns of the butterflies, butterfly wings, uh, it flaps, a butterfly, a butterfly will flap its wings, uh, like say at the rate of uh, hundreds or thousands uh, per second or uh, per minute. So uh, they, they used to count, they used to understand the pattern of these butterfly wings. So the flapping of this butterfly, butterfly wings and feeding the data into the computer and the, just they were understanding uh, based upon this, the pattern and they used to predict what might be the nature or what might be the impact of a particular tornado or the impact of uh, um, the many other natural calamities which is going to happen. Right? They are going to predict this and then precautionary measures used to be taken and uh, the chaotic uh, feedback systems were developed. Most of the chaotic feedback systems, alarming systems, uh, monitoring systems were generated by understanding the patterns of uh, small creatures or living beings or animals living on this earth. Okay, so that that depends on the creativity or the clever programs uh, programmers which understands the pattern or a huge amount of data and uh, build a program which would give some kind of um, result or decision making to any monitoring or alarming systems. Okay. So many programs on computer compete for user attention and interest. As I've said, it depends upon the requirement and it depends upon the user's attention or user's requirement. So we try to build the programs. And of course, uh, the programs which are built uh, needs to be uh, met or uh, needs to satisfy the user expectations and the needs, as I mentioned, what is the need of the current situation? What is the need of the current user? So it all depends upon uh, your program. If you have already written uh, a program which would uh, uh, give some insight or which would predict okay, the current situation so that the other uh, industries like uh, manufacturing, pharmaceutical industries sort of been alerted well in advance and they would have manufactured ample amount of uh, medicines and uh, of course, the oxygen and uh, would have been met the demand or the supply. And what is the motive? The prime motive of any programmer is to be more productive in handling the data. I could add a few more things here. Apart from more productive in handling the data, processing and uh, uh, data and information, but also the processing and coming into the conclusion, like uh, or predicting or forecasting the things or understanding the pattern of the data. So many things can be added here as a motive. So before you start programming, one can act both as the programmer and the end user. Suppose if I started with a small data, um, but to predict or to forecast whether it will rain today or whether it will rain tomorrow, looking into the present temperature, humidity, and the sun, the brightness, the saturation, the intensity, so looking into these data, if I have um, sensors which have acquired these data and have uh, the previous data with the same kind of uh, the data values, I could predict whether it's going to uh, rain today or if it is raining at what time it will rain. So uh, uh, it can act both as a programmer and the end user. Like uh, as an end user, you think whether I should go out to play or not during today. And as a programmer, you could suggest a, a user whether you are allowed to go outside or not. So in both the ways, you can enact like as a programmer as, a, as well as an end user before you start programming. So that is how I could uh, combine this slide as a creativity as well as motivation both. So in, in, in exam, you might get these kind of questions like uh, uh, why should you learn to write program and uh, uh, what is the impact of create creativity and motivation behind programming? Okay. And this is pretty Mm, not like uh, not that interesting much of uh, the content of this slide you might have come across in your previous years while studying computer hardware architecture i have uh, different entities here that i have input output devices i have central processing unit main memory network and secondary memory so i have this infrastructure i have these entities but who will connect these entities a programmer or a program 
will connect all these entities. So what is what do you mean by input and output devices? Input and output devices to the CPU can be a data acquisition device or a digital uh, sensors or a different types of um, audio sensors, image sensors, CMOS sensors, and different types of input devices. Output devices can be a monitors, display units, or a speakers, or uh, or an LED lights or and any kind of a signal which is coming out of the processing unit. What do you mean by CPU? CPU is a central processing unit which performs most of the operations like arithmetic, logical, Boolean, and different types of processing uh, stuffs. And what is main memory? You can save uh, your cache uh, programs. You can save your small amount of programs in the main memory. If it is too large, if the data is too large, it is given to the secondary memory. And you have a software here, which is connected to central processing unit and main memory. It's a heart of this processing, uh, connecting all these entities. You can have secondary memory, you have network. So why the network is used? Many of you people try to interact with the Google on your routine daily basis. Like you just try to fetch the information or the data from the network or from the servers. You need to write a program, a small amount of program. Uh, there, it's not visible. Basically, you're just trying to key in the uh, text which you're intended to look for in the Google server. You just type a letter, say, uh, SABIT or Python or uh, anything of your interest and you wait for the Google to respond. So at the back end, just imagine at the back end what is happening. So your text is given to a Google server search link. So that link, that text would enable the other entities like uh, maybe an HTML, maybe a socket programming. Uh, maybe it will try to connect to a particular link and go to a server and the server. So the request is sent to the server and the server will respond in terms of the data. So it will release the data to you in terms of ones and zeros. Of course, it's in machine level. And then you need a uh, converter here. So say uh, the converter, just like a, a translators, interpreters, or compilers, which will revert the uh, data into a visible format for you people to understand what is the kind of information which you have retrieved from the network. So all these entities require programming to interact, to communicate, to deliver, to request, to retrieve, to translate the data and uh, put it to the user for visualization or for uh, the further use or application. So remember this diagram. So you might be asked like to explain hardware, com computer hardware architecture and the programming, the role of programming in hardware and the computer hardware, hardware architecture. Just explain like what do you mean by input output devices like a keyboard and mouse and input uh, like a scan paper devices, scanning devices and other acquisition devices. So maybe a mic is also an input. Okay. So there are so many input devices. So CPU. So what you do basically you just try to take the input and process it, store it in the secondary memory or in the main memory, or just try to communicate it to the network. Or if you take only a network as a entity, you just try to type or type, a, you give a keyword search to the Google, try to interact, send a request, retrieve the data, and just try to explain this computer hardware architecture in your own words with some technical, uh, uh, of course, with the technical words. Okay. So understanding a programming, so it needs two skills, two important skills to be a programmer. Uh, first, you need to know the programming language. Here we are dealing with Python. You need to understand what is the vocabulary of the grammar, what my system understands. Okay. So and then uh, knowing the grammar, construct the well-formed sentences in this new language. If I say simply say, if I try to read this slide in a different way, programmer uh, skills need this language combine and convey idea see this is completely an unstructured way so here you need to construct well-formed sentences in a structured manner otherwise just the way you did not understand what i tried to say a moment ago a very similar way the computer will not understand if you don't construct well-formed sentences okay uh, includes vocabulary and grammar Correct. So the very first thing is understand what is vocabulary, what is grammar, and how to construct well-formed structured sentences. And then second, combining these words and sentences to convey an idea. It's not only if you have created a structured with a good grammar, uh, 
and well formed sentences ultimately if it is not serving the purpose or it ultimately if it's not serving or conveying an idea behind these formations then definitely it would be a disaster or it one can say it is a failure to a programmer remember you should be very proper and constructing using keywords syntax and uh, sentences words vocabulary grammar everything but in such a way that it will convey an idea like what exactly you are trying to do what problem exactly you are trying to solve okay so coming to words and sentences yeah sir the slide isn't visible only the first slide is visible sir is yes, now it's visible now it's proper now is it visible yes sir okay now is it visible words and sentences yes sir so the previous two slides we were not able to see on this okay uh, whatever i said okay ha computer hardware and architecture yes so hardware and understanding programming okay uh, understanding programming was visible the slides were visible no sir okay if not no, like sir. just uh, one second if not you just take a screenshot of this slide now so whatever uh, the terms and uh, terminologies i have explained was related to this computer hardware architecture uh, the input and output device cpu next is almost like the basics what you have studied and why do we need to program like uh, it connects all the entities different entities and going to the understanding the program just now i explained you need to have a proper vocabulary and the grammar and form of clear sentences in such a way that it would convey an idea of what kind of problem you are solving so these two basic skills are very much required by a programmer now keeping these two things in concept now we explain like what do you mean by understanding program and what are the two skills required by a programmer it is just like if i give you a problem say i give you just very recently i've discussed it's already a big problem okay fine it's 24th april 2021 can anybody predict like what would be the supply and demand for uh, 2022 again the same day 24th april so one year what would be the demand of the oxygen or the uh, the remdesivir medicine say for example so it has been completely a chaotic situation right and today's world so uh, can can you forecast so this is my problem now can you solve it so yeah there are so plenty of solutions there are plenty of uh, programming uh, solutions so now if you have chosen uh, python as uh, the programming language where you want to try to give some solutions to this problem you need to have a uh, clear structure of or you need to know the vocabulary grammar and sentences to create programming so that you will peep it to the previous data so what was in 2020 what was in 2019 what is in 2021 you will be having the pattern of supply and demand of all these units of oxygen and remdesivir so and then you try to match that pattern with the amount of infected people so this is the infected people this is the so this was the during march 2020 and this has happened during march 2021 so this is how you use the previous data into predicting the future infected people and so many were infected so how many what is the supply and demand for the different uh, entities like medicine and the other units so this is how you could convey an idea you have the problem now you try to look into the previous data what was the infected what was the supply and what who are the manufacturers so keep it in track and then just try to predict what happens if this is happening what happens if the complete lockdown is completely lifted so what happens if so many people are moving in and around what would be the infected rate so there are lot many things involved in data processing data computation data handling data pre processing and predicting so this is a problem so under understand the problem and then now it is left to you people how to write a program by using a proper grammar vocabulary and create the proper statements or sentences okay so coming to the words and sentences as i have already introduced words and sentences here in this slide so what do you mean by words and sentences it's pretty uh, Uh, just like a human language what we use the python vocabulary is actually pretty small vocabulary is termed as reserved words python has got some predefined words 
okay and it can only be understood by the python just like if you are training a dog we use a special reserve words like sit stay fetch stand walk come here go there so something like that so we use some kind of reserve words which uh, the only a particular dog will understand so very similar to that a machine if a machine has got some kind of reserve words which only the machine understands and obviously we as a human uh, being also understand the same uh, reserve words because it's a high level language it's been created so programmers or programs been created using these words that have some definite meanings you call it as variables so, uh, in an example i've just created x is equal to or a is equal to 2 what do you mean by a is equal to 2 a is a variable a is the user defined variable correct so programmer sometimes will have to create his own words right other apart from the reserved words you call it as variables whereas i have some kind of words which is already built in say print print is a built in statement print is a reserved word i have many such reserved words uh, i think it's yeah it is there here you can see i have reserved words which is understood by python as well as human beings it's a high level language high level reserved words and and is a Uh, an operator dl is a function elif is an operator if is an operator or is an operator it's a boolean operator so e is an operator so there are plenty of reserved words which is which can be understood by python and you are not supposed to use the reserved words as your own words if you are trying to define the variables so what do you mean by variables variables are user defined words correct any doubt user words is nothing but a user defined word and now if you create if you just try to um have different types of words and creating the statements or sentences okay with a proper syntax so that creates a small program so one can have a great latitude of choosing variables but definitely not python's reserved words okay as a name for your variable very important in matlab we used to restrict you people creating your uh, matlab files by the reserved word say uh, we used to restrict you people by creating any python file uh, sorry matlab file by the file name conv why because conv was a reserved word or a function in a matlab and you are not allowed to create a file name not to use a conv as a file name nor as a variable okay a very simple concept so conversing with the python as i have uh, told you we are going to converse it with the python i am not using shell programming or an ide here rather i will be using a jupyter notebook you could see uh, before you converse with the python you must first install the python software which i think most of you have already done and uh, you will find a terminal or a command window uh, Uh, here this this example this screenshot which is taken uh, it is from idle idle uh, or i could say um, what is the type of uh, ide uh, shell programming correct so i have used shell programming here to take the screenshot uh, but we are using jupyter notebook for uh, to interact okay so i'll go to the next slide so what we have done um so we have printed hello world here so i'll go back to I'll switch my screen i'll switch the screen to the jupyter notebook how to write program on your screen is it visible No sir. How uh, about now? Is it visible? Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes sir. Okay fine. See if if I want to edit or uh, if I want to cut these cells, I can. I could use this uh, scissor option. You can cut these cells. You can. Uh, I'll try to trim off, and uh, if you want to delete, you can say delete and uh, run the program. Okay, so what was the first program? The first program says I want to print this statement. Okay, I just copy it and go back here and print this statement. It would say 
hello world whatever uh, the input arguments been given to this function see this print is a function okay so this print is a function whatever you type inside this function as an input argument so two i call it as an input argument so it will print it on your result screen or on your uh, result window below your cell suppose if i print say a so since it's already it was defined if i say print x now you can see the x is not defined what do you mean by this error can anybody tell what is this error so the name of error is x is not not defined sir the variable x is not defined so basically this x is neither understood by your python programming because x is not defined say x is defined as um, 4.5 so i could uh, easily print x as 4.5 and if i want to know what is the type of this variable i could simply say type type is a function which is used to understand what is the type of the variable okay so if i say type of x what is the type of x now can anybody say what is the type of x it's a floating point value you can see the type of x is float okay now if i want to uh, change the value of x here immediately after this cell i could change it as x is equal to put it in single quote so now i can convert this as a string okay now the type of x is a string so whatever comes inside the single quote uh, today is a weekend okay so whatever i type in this single quote will be understood by your compiler as a string so if you see this is a string what if i don't use the string what if i don't use the string single quotes i would get an error because it's an invalid syntax can you see is is here a keyword is was a keyword I just are giving given hint here can you see the color and the font size it's bold and color is green bluish green right so that means it is a keyword for a uh, python so it is it is uh, giving you an hint whereas uh, the all the other characters here today x equal to x equal to is an operator so today is uh, it might be a variable but use a defined variable it's not been a keyword or it's not been a function or defined function week and is also not being used so i could say i could define this if i want to convert this to a string so it should be in a single quote right otherwise it would give an error to me so any string should be in a single quote okay so the, the we'll come across different types of errors whenever whenever we go the uh, in depth in program let us not just try to cover everything here in this uh, slide we'll go to the next slide so terminology so i'll be using some terminals like interpreter and compiler so what are these terminologies like interpreter and compiler so both are used to assist higher level languages and it's just like a mediator between the high level language or a programmer or the programmer understanding language and the compiler or the machine level language so a computer understands uh, the only a machine learning language like ones and zeros or some some alien characters you can see come across hexadecimal also sometimes and uh, we human beings understand high level language python is considered to be as a high level language uh, which can be understood uh, very straight forwarded by the human beings we can read and write very easily just like an english language the other high level languages like um, java c++ php ruby basic perl javascript and many others but what is the problem the problem of higher level languages it needs some kind of translators right so let me just put here can you see here it's a machine level language some alien language it's not easy to read by us so what what does it require so we need some translators right to make machine understand what human is typing and uh, human will understand the problem or the uh, uh, what what he needs to design and he will put it in higher level language and it will be converted to a machine learning language 
we build various translators to allow programmers to write in other language in Python. But translators are very much required. There are two types of translators. One is interpreter and second one is compiler. Programs written in higher level language to be moved from one device to another device. So some devices uh, uh, accommodate or some devices uh, is compatible with interpreters. Some devices are compatible with compilers. So what is the difference between interpreters and compilers? So interpreter, when we run the program, Python interactively uh, runs the program with respect to each sentences. When you put a sentence in Python, it's already been interpreted by your uh, processor. So, but the problem with the compiler is you need to build an entire program as a file and you have to hand it over to the compiler and the compiler, compiler will debug, will compile, will check for the errors, then it, it will put it for the execution. It will compile and it will translate it to the machine level language. But in case of uh, interpreter, Interpreter allows directly the machine, the machine to process, right? The compiler needs the entire program, whereas the interpreter, as and when you write a small sentence, each and every sentence is compiled then and there only, or uh, interpreted then and there only. This is the two uh, different entities, interpreter and the compiler. Compiler, the only difference between interpreter and compiler is compiler is nothing but a complete program, just like your uh, C program in DSP. You have written the complete C program, correct? And then you have run, uh, you have debug, you have build, you have compiled and check for errors. That is how it goes. Whereas in interpreter, when you write a, a sentence or when you write a single uh, uh, sentence, it will be interpreted then and there only. Okay. So we have interpreters and compiler that allows us to write and high level language like Python or C. So it depends upon the machine. It depends upon the device which you're uh, using. So, uh, so Python, I guess it uh, supports both interpreter as well as a compiler, but it's faster when it comes to an interpreter. Why? Because it reduces the machine cycle. You need to have the entire program and then run the entire program. Okay. Uh, as uh, I've said, yeah, I forgot to mention few things. Here in Jupyter Notebook, if you could see uh, the Jupyter, well, we have typed the, uh, uh, some commands. Let me just uh, share the entire screen again. I'll be sharing you the entire screen from now on because I'll be switching from one screen to another screen. Could you see this Jupyter notebook file? Is it visible? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. The name of the file is example, right? The name of the file is example. So now if I go back to the folder where I've created this Jupyter Notebook, you could see I have uh, created this here. Can you see this? Example.ipynb. One second, okay, can you see this? IPYNB. The file which I have selected. The type is IPYNB, right? So this is a Jupyter Notebook file. This is the uh, the, the format of the Jupyter Notebook file. Whereas if you create the files in other IDs, like say Spider or Sublime Text, which I'll be introducing uh, you people in the next coming uh, classes, not uh, in today's class, all, all the uh, IDs or editors. Suppose if you are uh, just like a .mat extension that you're saving your file, there are several such IDs where you can type the programs and save it. So the Python files are usually saved in editors with the .py extension, whereas you can see here uh, in Jupyter Notebook, it has been saved as a default file that is IPYNB, Jupyter Notebook, IPython Notebook file, okay? IPYNB, IPython Notebook file editor or the file type. So whereas then, the other IDs, like if you're using sublime text or you are using shell programming or spider, spider is also there, which, is, which comes with Anaconda. It's a free open source application software. So you can use it, but while saving the files, you have to save it with the .py extension. So type the commands into your Python interpreter. It, uh, and then if you want to use the text editors, you can use the text editors. You can uh, write the script and then you have to save it with dot py extension okay so 
this is all about uh, today's class so in the next class we will uh, start writing uh, the program and uh, the small programs we shall just try to introduce uh, some variables we should just try to use some iterative loops and uh, just try to define a program in a proper way in a syntax and try to understand what are the building blocks of the program and uh, what are the different types of 